hallowed be your name on earth as in heaven. Kia tapu tō ingoa, ki runga ki te whenua, ki a rite anō ki tō te rangi. Good morning and welcome to Morning Prayer. I'm here with Luna. She's about to take off, but we hope you've had a wonderful couple of weeks break as we've taken a pause of our morning prayer videos over our school holidays. Our call to worship is to always be joyful, pray continually, give thanks to God for everything, whatever happens. And so hear these words of Jesus, our Saviour. When you do a kindness, hide from your left hand what your right is doing. Your good deed must be done in secret. When you pray, pray privately alone. When you fast, don't make a show of it. Don't do it to be seen, and your Father who sees in secret will reward you. Would any of you who are parents give your child a wetter when asked for a fish? Bad as you are, you know what to give your children. How much more will the Heavenly Father give to those who ask? Believe what Jesus says. God is generous. God is good. Etefano, let us love one another because love is from God. We love because God loved us first. And everyone who loves is a child of God and knows God. If we do not love the people we have seen, it cannot be that we love God whom we have not seen. God is love. Those who dwell in love are dwelling in God and God in them. Our reading continues in the Acts of the Apostles, chapter 26, beginning at the first verse. Paul defends himself before Agrippa. Agrippa said to Paul, you have permission to speak for yourself. Then Paul stretched out his hand and began to defend himself. I consider myself fortunate that it is before you, King Agrippa, I am to make my defence today against all the accusations of the Jews, because you are especially familiar with all the customs and controversy of the Jews. Therefore, I beg of you to listen to me patiently. All the Jews know my way of life from my youth, a life spent from the beginning among my own people and in Jerusalem. They have known for a long time, if they are willing to testify, that I have belonged to the strictest sect of our religion and lived as a Pharisee. And now I stand here on trial on account of my hope in the promise made by God to our ancestors, a promise that our twelve tribes hope to attain as they earnestly worship day and night. It is for this hope, Your Excellency, that I am accused by Jews. Why, it is thought incredible by any of you that God raises the dead. Indeed, I myself was convinced that I ought to do many things against the name of Jesus of Nazareth. And that is what I did in Jerusalem, with authority received from the chief priests. I not only locked up many of the saints in prison, but I also cast my vote against them when they were being condemned to death. By punishing them, often in all the synagogues, I tried to force them to blaspheme, and since I was so furiously enraged at them, I pursued them even to foreign cities. With this in mind, I was travelling to Damascus with the authority and commission of the chief priests. When at midday along your road, Your Excellency, I saw a light from heaven, brighter than the sun, shining around me and my companions. When we had all fallen to the ground, I heard a voice saying to me in the Hebrew language, Saul, Saul, why are you persecuting me? It hurts you to kick against the goads. I asked, Who are you, Lord? The Lord answered, I am Jesus, whom you are persecuting. But get up 
and stand on your feet, for I have appeared to you for this purpose, to appoint you to serve and testify to the things in which you have seen me and to those in which I will appear to you. I will rescue you from your people and from the Gentiles to whom I am sending you to open their eyes so that they may turn from darkness to light and from the power of Satan to God, so that they may rejoice and receive forgiveness of sins and a place among those who are sanctified by faith in me. After that, King Agrippa, I was not disobedient to the heavenly vision, but declared first to those in Damascus, then in Jerusalem and throughout the countryside of Judea, and also to the Gentiles, that they should repent and turn to God and do deeds consistent with repentance. For this reason, the Jews seized me in the temple and tried to kill me. To this day, I have had help from God, and so I stand here testifying to both great and small, saying nothing but what the prophets and Moses said would take place, that the Messiah must suffer, and that by being the first to rise from the dead, he would proclaim light both to our people and to the Gentiles. And so I invite you to pause with me as we reflect on God's word, this miraculous conversion of Saul that he has recounted to us. As we perhaps consider our own need to repent, to turn around, to have our lives continually converted and brought into alignment with God's plan for this week ahead. I'm going to pray this prayer of the church by Walter Brueggemann. In your presence and in the company of your good saints, we offer you our praise and thanksgiving for life and for calling, for the joys of friendship and for the burden of faith. As we sit in the midst of your many mercies, we are mindful of so many of our brothers and sisters who dwell in places short of mercy, absent of justice, defaulted on the gifts of life. We can recite the grocery list of needful people and violent places, but you know them all. As you know them and we know them, we pledge in this company to take these needful people in these violent places as our call from you. We are so poorly equipped for such a call, but you are the God who gives bread and wine, table and towel, book and song, and with them courage, freedom, and energy for the task to which we are unequal. Cash, catch us up this day into the reality of your good purpose that by the time we leave each other we will know yet again that your mercy and justice and compassion outrun all the needs of the world sign us on and bless your church bless the bishops and the priests bless the pastors and the elders Bless all the faithful in places harder than our own, in places of seduction like ours, in places of temptation we know too well. Keep us simple and on task, and we will praise you by our glad obedience. Amen. We hold 
our day before God with its many needs, the tasks, the conversations, the meetings. And we invite God's spirit to be present with us, to direct and guide us. And so as our Saviour teaches us, we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil for the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. Holy One, holy and eternal, awesome, exciting and delightful in your holiness. Make us pure in heart to see you. Make us merciful to receive your kindness and to share our love with all your human family. Then will your name be hallowed on earth as in heaven. Lord God, when you give to us your servants any great matter to do, Grant us also to know that it is not the beginning but the continuing of it until it is thoroughly finished, which yields the true glory. God of work and rest and pleasure, grant that what we do this week may be for us an offering rather than a burden. And for those we serve, may it be the help they need. Amen. Thank you so much for joining me for morning prayer. Luna's at the other end of the table washing and I pray God's blessings on you for your day ahead. Go well. <laughs>